As many of you probably know, our lovely blue ball we call home has two poles, a north pole and a south pole. These poles in the Arctic and Antarctic drive a lot of the weather factors we have on our home planet. They provide us with cold streams, penguins, polar bears. Those are all super important things. And of course, this is all thanks to the Earth's axis being tilted at about 23.5 degrees. This causes the north and south poles to be where they are. Kind of. There's a lot of things that go into that that I'm not really going to have time to cover, but that doesn't really play a large role in what we're discussing today. We're mostly talking about the tilt and axis, so what if the poles shifted and Antarctica was on the equator? Antarctica is currently the world's largest desert, receiving an average of 6.5 inches of rain per year. Of course, some areas get more than others, this is just an average of the whole continent. Any location that receives less than 10 inches of rain a year is classified as a desert. Antarctica is also the coldest region on Earth, and weather fronts rarely enter this winter wonderland due to the catabatic winds. These powerful winds, capable of reaching hurricane speeds, force air from out of the continent and onto the ocean, preventing most systems from bringing in moisture. This of course also applies to other areas around the world, even Southern California has similar winds called the Santa Ana winds. Alaska, South America, Greenland, and of course the Arctic all have similar winds. These winds are very similar to what I had mentioned in the Island of California episode, where cold air rises and hot air sinks. So when air comes rushing down canyons, it's because the cold air is sinking. This is kind of a similar effect. For us though, this is just important for understanding a little more about Antarctica and how it works. So to make Antarctica green, what has to happen? Well, I'm mostly going to just tilt the Earth like this. Now the equator runs across this region of the planet, right through the Arctic and Antarctic. With that done, it might make you wonder, where are the North and South Poles now? Well, the new South Pole will be located somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean, close to South America, and the new North Pole will be located in northwestern Australia. It's funny though, before I talk about any other continents and climate systems, I want to point out that nothing will probably happen to New Zealand in this scenario. It almost remained in the exact distance to the South Pole and the equator, so the climate in the region will likely stay very similar to what it is. So now we have two major areas of interest along the equator, and I want to start with Antarctica, of course. With all the ice gone and moved away, Antarctica will become a large archipelago of tropical islands, the largest of which is this one. Don't know what we'll call it, uh, you can make a name for it yourself if you want. Now I've labeled Antarctica as tropical with some subtropic regions, and the reason for this is the Pacific and Indian Oceans that are right next to it. These two large bodies of water will likely have two warm equatorial currents, kind of like how I mentioned in the previous episode about the continent of Mu. So with two large currents on either side of the Antarctic archipelago, it's likely we could see two El Ninos or two warmings of the equatorial waters, one on the east and one on the west side of this large archipelago, and that could play some major role in the weather on this new Earth. I think Antarctica will be hit by a lot of frequent storms, be it hurricanes, typhoons, or anything similar to that from both east and west due to the warm currents flowing on either side. I imagine on the larger island as well, a large rainforest will probably thrive here. Now let's move to the other side of the planet. Let's take a look at the Arctic. This whole bit of ocean here will become the Arctic Bay. I know it's technically not a bay. It really looks like it though. I know there's the Straits over there by Alaska, but I'm going to call it the Arctic Bay for simplicity. Now this is probably my favorite region in the world, and that's just mostly because it looks cool. I also think this region could be home to a large number of people groups. Now what might actually be similar to Antarctica is that Canada's large northern islands, Greenland, and northern Russia will be fairly tropical and subtropical, with southern Greenland likely becoming cooler. And it's funny because Greenland is now actually Greenland. So it's humorous, I guess. Now I mentioned that southern Greenland's cooler, I think that the Gulf Stream will be bringing cold water from the new South Pole. 
and with this new current like it is, it'll be bringing cooler temperatures along the eastern U.S. and Canada and Greenland's southern tip. This may be a little more marine and temperate as you head further south along the U.S. coast, with Florida's Everglades being replaced by Evergreens. <laughs> now the heartland of the United States, the Great Plains, I think that these plains and part of southern Canada will become a desert. I feel like the Rocky Mountains will be blocking a lot of moisture from the Pacific and this could stretch into the Gulf of Mexico near the Appalachians. Although it could be interesting with that is that I think the Mississippi River, if it still exists as we know it, could form something similar to the Nile we see in Egypt. Though this is unlikely, I'll go for that a little more later on. The western US and Canada though could become more tropical than they are in our timeline and that's another interesting thing too. Funny enough, again, the UK may be relatively similar to how it is in our world due to its location and a cool Gulf Stream helping cool any bit of the land that might be a little warmer than usual. Scotland might be a little warmer than it is today, but England will probably remain relatively the same. Now, something very interesting is the change we will have to the Sahara Desert much of Africa will be drastically different. Of course, with the new Antarctic Circle along your western shorelines, nothing's really going to be the same. A lot of Africa will become the new Siberia along the west, central, and northern portions of the continent. Lots of cold air and pine trees in this region of the world acting as lungs for the planet. The same can be said for South America once you reach further along the northern regions and western regions. And I know I keep referring to these as Northern Western as they are in our world, it's just a little easier for you guys to understand. Another funny moment, <laughs> this video is just hilarious, is that Kazakhstan will likely be desert still, and it will probably stretch down to the Gobi Desert in China. With that said, I think that China will likely be one of the more temperate climates in the world, along with Japan and much of Southeast Asia. Their proximity to receiving cold waters from Australia and being so high up in latitude will create some lovely green coasts and forests throughout the regions. Part of India and Saudi Arabia, I think, will receive some tropical moisture from the warm current in the Indian Ocean. Though that may be the end of the moisture for the Middle East, as you head further inland towards the Mediterranean, it'll likely dry up and become arid, kind of like it is today. Something I could touch on a little bit is people groups. Likely, I think most of the Arctic Bay would become a hub of trade and transit and where people would live just due to the large number of islands. And of course, this is where the bulk of all the land masses kind of meet together. It's not too far to travel from Russia to Alaska now. And with a lot of that water being warmer than it is, it's not so inhospitable to live in. It may act as the Mediterranean did in our timeline, I feel like. Now, I think though that the area in the world that would stand out the most for people cultures is probably China. China will be a lot cooler and temperate, kind of like Northern Europe is today, and a large number of the population could live here I think, and as you head away from the coast of China, I think the inland areas would be very suitable for agriculture. Now something else that would be interesting to mention too is that I think Antarctica, the large archipelago, would be very untouched. Not a lot of people would be able to reach this land because it's pretty far away and with the South Pole being along South America and near Africa it's going to be even harder to reach these new lands down there. Something else interesting I'll mention that I can't go over too much is that a lot of the land features we know today would be very different. Much of North America, Alaska, the Western US, Great Lakes, and Canada, a lot of their current features, especially the mountains, is due to glacial activity. Same with the Great Lakes, of course. These would probably be very effective. We might not even recognize how the landscape looks just because the Ice Age would not have affected these regions as it did in our timeline. And we're still in an Ice Age. Of course, this is all just my idea of what a world like this would be like and how it could function. There's a lot more that someone can go into detail over this, like people groups, where they live, especially with the weather. There's so much different. I just covered a little broad sense and gave you an idea of what it could be like. However, I don't have time to go over every single detail in one video. I'll also say that some of these drawings were just confusing to look at for me. 
What do you think this new world would be like? Share some of your thoughts down below and feel free to leave suggestions for something else I could cover. Thank you and have a great day.